with Petra and Kevin's petite size Aussie doodles. These are F1 Aussie doodles. They are a petite size, so 16 to 20 pounds mature. And they are just awesome. And that's my burner doodle over there, my mini burner doodle, wanting to play. Say she wants to play. I, um, this is just a litter of four. Small litter, but bigger than the litter of two we had last year. So we're excited. Um, two chocolates and two of the Merle color. And this little guy, <laughs> the smallest of the litter, um, little red collar boy is available right now. And they all have blue eyes. Can we see the blue? There's the blue. Hi, blue boy. Hi, yes. Um, he is chocolate and white with a little bit of, of a lighter color in there. And blue eyes. He has the full tail with the little white tip on it and just adorable. Then we have yellow collar boy who is reserved and blue eyes there as well. Aren't you pretty? Aren't you pretty? And he has the um, shorter tail. Yes, not quite a bob tail, but a shorter tail. Okay, then my little girl, who we are keeping here for our breeding program. This is Purple Collar Girl. Yep. And then this one is the one that actually has my heart. And um, this is hard for me because she's not resolved and I, I just can't, I can't keep them all. I just can't. If I could, I'd keep this entire litter. I am telling you, this is an awesome litter. And it's hard for me to describe um, the softness until you get your hands on one of these. It's just amazing to see the softness. But this little light pink collar girl, look at those blue eyes. Look at your eyes. She is a mama's girl. In other words, she just cuddles with me. She's got a little bob tail, chocolate and white. She is absolutely beautiful. She is the biggest of the litter. So, um, you know, probably she's going to be at that 20 pound mark. But um, she is just cuddly and fluffy and right now i need cuddle and fluff today i know they're just everything i want in a dog right here this is what i want in a pet dog right here this is what i'm keeping why am i keeping this well she's also awesome but i also have to continue our breeding program because i need to make other generations of Aussie Doodles, but also we're going for the Golden Mountain Aussie Doodle, and she has everything needed. She has personality, she has the colors, she has everything, size, everything that I need to further that line. So that's why I'm keeping her. But what I want to keep, he was also a huge possibility because of the lighter color, but also his personality. Yeah, but he, um, we decided that we're gonna go with the girl line and then we will um, keep a boy later. Honestly, if I was gonna keep a boy, it would probably have been this little guy here. Um, he, his personality is awesome. And of course the chocolate and the smaller size, just, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Are you trying to chase the tail that you don't really have? Yeah, you and your sister there. So, um, right now, the two chocolates are available. And I just, I need to stick with my decision on Purple Girl because it was a family decision. We took everybody in the room, took everybody's opinions. We looked at all of our genetics. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's the sad part. Are you going potty right there on the corner of all the potty pads? And, and, and still, you, you actually missed it, buddy. You missed it. You did, don't argue. Don't argue. Now we're, look what we're gonna do. We're gonna cover it up so that we don't just get wet everywhere. Uh, and that's how we end up with so many potty pads on the floor. We start with one or two and we end up with 30, maybe 60. Okay, so um, 
pink collar girl decided that, that our video time should be done. Say, I, I was trying to get in your arms and literally her paws were just like so soft and perfect. She just turned off the video. No, no, you do not bite my feet. Um, no, we don't, we don't chew on the feet. Toes are not, not approved chew toys. Um, anywho, anywho, now we're getting lively. Now we're getting lively. <laughs> She's more fluffy than anything. I just, ah! Well, this is doing my heart good. Guys, it has been, um, it has been a day. It has been a day. It has been a week, a month, a year. It's just been not fun. I got to tell you. Okay, had to pause in the clip there for a second to answer a phone call. My husband is um, getting wonderful dinner at Whataburger and McDonald's because when you're a family of 10, um, it's just, although we do, we do do it from time to time, but I'm like, it's just, it's, it's somewhat rude and impossible to get your order if you order from the same place. And Right now, um, I was supposed to make lasagna for dinner, but I can't do puppies and dinner with the way I am feeling today. So it was, I, I had a choice. I could shower, I could come and video puppies or make dinner and I chose to be with puppies. What would you choose? What would you choose? Anyway, um, so yeah, tonight it's McDonald's and Whataburger. And honestly, nobody's really all that hungry. Um, we've gone from the death of my dad um, with the grief. Nobody's been wanting to eat because of the grief. And then now we've all gotten sick. And that's where we are right now. Um, I have upgraded to pneumonia, but I honestly um, don't feel too horrible at this current second. And that could be because I'm in here and I, I will say that the one thing, um, yeah, don't worry, I'm being very careful. Being very careful. Um, I have not been in here uh, uh, until today, but my husband and my children that have been feeling up to par have been in here. And I don't mean the little ones. The little ones can't, they can't practice um, not, not kissing and all that kind of stuff. They just can't do that. They have to kiss their puppies. So they haven't been in here. But really, really, that's just, that's not nice. That's not nice. Don't do that. Don't do that. So yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm just spilling to all of you guys while you watch these cute little puppies. Yes, yes. Because it has just been, you know, um, I have lost a child. So I know grief, we're pretty, um, we're pretty familiar with each other. I actually wrote a book on it. And so, um, you know, it's one of those things that it does not take me by surprise, but what took me by surprise is um, that dad actually did pass away. Um, he's come very close before and we really didn't expect it. We just were like, okay, we're back at this space. That really did take us by surprise. And also um, just how much my life revolved around my father. Um, he is the reason that we are in Texas. Um, when, when we lost our son, we could no longer, uh, I worked for the government at the time for the Department of Energy and I, I couldn't go back to work. I just could not, uh, grief took me to the point where I could not work. My husband needed to be out of his familiar place, which was his family business. And um, my dad offered my husband a position at his ranch, had his cattle ranch. So my husband went from being um, a very talented um, drapery manufacturer, custom drapery manufacturer, um, with his family visit. I, I can barely sew on a button, but my husband makes wonderful bedding and pillows and all kinds of stuff. Yes. So when you see my husband, just know he, he has a lot of talent there, but, um, we moved here to Texas and my husband became the foreman of my dad's cattle ranch. So my husband became a career cowboy, which was awesome. He loved it. He has always loved horses and now of course um buffalo and angus and elk uh, that's what he was managing and then my husband um 
so Phil, my husband was experiencing some health issues with his knee and back, went in, had an MRI and they found um, a lesion on his brain stem. And this ended his cowboy career. So he was put on a medical sabbatical um, from my dad. So um, he started helping me with the puppies, which was great because uh, we had just adopted three babies and life was starting to get a little hectic on my end. No, now you and mama are gonna have to have, yeah, a meeting. Yeah, because we don't do that. We don't do that. And now you're in my lap. Please stop loving on me. It makes it so hard. It makes it so hard. Um, so that's kind of how, uh, that that's my sob story today, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, you come here to see happy puppies and happy people, and I'm just, you can watch the happy puppies and just mute. Just mute. Turn the volume down. So anyway, today has just been one of those where um, I had this, dream of my dad last night and we were traveling back to Colorado and we were um we stopped at, at his house and I could hear his voice clear as day but I couldn't see him and I just woke up and I was just yeah I was like you know I've been focusing on being sick and when you have eight sick children um you know you're just you're just trying to survive in that retrospect i'm trying to um make sure everybody has their meds everybody has everything they need and we're staying on top of everything and um so the illness actually was a distraction i don't know if that's a god design or i mean i am diabetic so i have zero immune system but it, uh, everybody got sick and the last time we were this sick was when my brother-in-law passed away five years ago um, where the whole family got sick and I, I really think that grief has a way of just wearing you down it just wears you down so um, you know concentrating on everybody's health and concentrating on getting the puppies out the door um, we had our um, Diana and Jack puppies that went home this weekend and so all of that was a really good distraction and I don't know once once things, uh, you know, along those lines um, started settling down, then it's like my brain went back to, oh yeah, and by the way, uh, look at you, look at you. Here's our two that are, are available. Yes. Ah, here's the thing. Petra, their mama, is just all smiles. I mean, the dog literally smiles. She <laughs> smiles all the time. Her and her blue eyes, she smiles. She is just happy. And their dad is this personality right here. Just happy and <laughs> always happy to see you. And what are we doing next? It's just, it's absolutely adorable. So you have got, oh, are you being sympathetic to the puppies over there? Yeah, do you hear them crying? They were already in here though. Yes, they were. We have two extended stays from Diana's that will be going home. So anywho, um, so yeah, after after that dream, I just woke up crushed again. It was like, oh, this is, this is reality. This is reality every day. So um, not to solicit happy birthdays. I will solicit chocolate, but not happy birthdays. Tomorrow is my birthday. Um, and so uh, I am I am the first of us kids to have a birthday without dad. Everybody else kind of got to, you know, finish up their birthdays with him. And so I have my first birthday without my dad. My dad always called me on my birthday. And so I saved, went to my voicemail and saved as many, although I have a different phone account. Um, I, I, I had gotten rid of my other phone many years ago, and so I don't have all of the messages, which now I'm really sad about, but um, I saved as many as I could. So I, when I woke up from that, that dream, although it wasn't, you know, today's not my birthday, I went ahead and started playing his happy birthday messages to me. And, um, you know, I was just like, I can't believe that this is life right now. And so many of you can relate. And although we expect our parents to pass before us and we, Woo! <laughs> did that not work out well? So, yeah, you conquer the bench.
conquer that bench. Actually, it's it's a exercise stair step, which um, clearly I do not use. Yeah, I think I'm allergic to it. There we go. Yes, look at you. Look at you. Damn, just a dumpling. Oh, whoop, whoop. Yeah, he's like, why did you make me step backwards? I'm sorry. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Don't worry. I called you dumpling, but I'm not going to eat you. I promise. Do you want to get up on the bench? <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's just been this week, guys. And I just I just didn't want to um, didn't want to do this because you, you do expect your parents to pass before you, which is why when we lost our son, that was you know, um, tragedy upon tragedy, you know, that's not something you ever expect. But, uh, like I said, my world was very much revolved around my dad and, uh, with my husband's work and everything. So, um, it, it's just, you know, he, he, uh, helped us with the financing to be able to adopt our youngest Sarah, which was awesome and so you know dad is a huge huge part of my life it's weird to refer to him in the past tense but um one of the reasons uh or the reason i should say that lambda farms was started with puppies was for before we even moved here to texas and that was because of our loss with william no no i can't get a hold of your snout to say no no bite no bite and I turn to puppy therapy. Um, like right now, I am in here. This is forcing me to to do what I need to do right now. And part of that is to breathe and to do the next thing. Just do that next thing. And um, what, what, are you eyeing me? I love you. I do love you. I do love you. I just have a little bit of a crush on her. He, and you, and you, he's looking at me like, I'm not me. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's hard when you keep, when you keep a puppy. Yes. Because then you feel bad that you didn't choose all the other puppies. I know my owners that come feel the same way. Uh, a lot of times when people come to pick their puppies, they are choosing between their favorite two. And they feel so bad for the one that they're not choosing because they're like, oh, but I love you and I don't want you to, you know, think I don't love you. But you know what? They're they're all gonna go to homes that they're meant to be in. I completely believe that. Um, I do believe that we, we, we pray over our puppies even before they're conceived and we pray that they all go to the right home. So even though love ups, you know, they happen, things happen, uh, cancellations happen, everybody ends up with the right owner. So I do believe that. Look at you two. Hi! <laughs> Hi! Yes! Hi, pumpkin. All right, I'm going to stop babbling. Um, there, if you all have to take antidepressants after listening to me today, I'm so sorry. Um, don't worry, I am being looked after <laughs> with my mental health. Uh, yeah, psychiatry appointment is, is the day after tomorrow. So we're all good. We're all good. All right, guys, watch these fluffies run around for a little bit. I will see you, um, next week. Say bye-bye.